Hello and welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. My co-host Mr. Brody is here with Purple Monkey, um, the Blue Duck, and another one of his characters there. Um, the unnamed guy in the corner there, the black uh, duck. I think that might be a duck also of some sort. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're here to do another game from the 1978 Los Angeles Dodgers uh, month of September. Um, Dodgers won the first game on September 1st to go to 90 wins. And um, we're going to be going again, up against the New York Mets again. And this is going to be a doubleheader day. Um, this is game one of the doubleheader with uh, a pitcher named, uh, let's see what his name is here, Mike Bruhart, Bruhart for the New York Mets going up against Burt Hooten for the Dodgers. So without further ado, let's get this game underway. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. So Burt Hooten on the hill for the Dodgers here at Dodgers Stadium. He comes in with a 14 and 5 record so far in the replay with a 2.54 earn run average. He was 19 and 10 on the actual season with a very similar ERA, 2.71. He's pitched 198 innings, allowing 177 hits, 44 walks, and 91 strikeouts, and has surrendered 15 homers so far. So the lineup for the New York Mets is going to be Lenny Randall, the second baseman. Actually, sorry, third baseman. He'll lead it off. Followed by Bobby Valentine, the second baseman. Lee Mazzilli is in center, to getting a start today. We'll bat third. Um, Willie Montanez, the first baseman, will hit cleanup, followed by John Stearns, the catcher. Batting fifth is... Sorry, batting uh, sixth is Steve Henderson, the left fielder. Bruce Beauclair is in right, getting a start today. We'll hit seventh, followed by Doug Flynn at shortstop eighth, and Mike Bruhart, the pitcher, is on the mound. So Mike Bruhart is a pitcher I don't really remember from the New York Mets. Again, it's September, so they might have been a, might have been a September call-up at the time. We'll take a look at his stats when we get to uh, when the Mets take the field. As Miss Mags is joining us. So anyway, the defense behind Hooten is going to be Dusty Baker and left. Rick Monday gets the start in center, and Reggie Smith again in right field. In the infield is the familiar Say Russell Lopes and Garvey, and Steve Yeager is going to get the start behind the plate. Very ec an excellent uh, defensive catcher with a great arm, great range. So he'll get the start behind the plate catching Hooten. So Say and Garvey are in at the corners for Randall, who comes in with a 214 average with 21 runs batted in. Great pitches duel in yesterday's game. So if you haven't checked that one out, check that out. <laughs> Mr. Brody's all excited about this game. He's got to get himself a drink of water. So Hooten looks in for the sign from Yeager. Here's the wind-up in the pitch. It's going to be off the one column. And that's going to be a called third strike. So Hooten K is the first batter he faces. Next up, 
the future manager, Bobby Valentine. Valentine hitting 273 with a homer and 13 runs batted in. Here's the windup and the pitch by Hooten. And he's going to take this one deep to left. Baker goes back, heading towards the fence, and makes the catch at the fence for out number two. So next up will be Lee Mazzilli. Lee Mazzilli comes in hitting 243 with 11 homers and 46 runs batted in. Mazzilli, the lefty, steps into the box. Here's the wind up in the pitch. It's going to be off the five column. And that is going to be right back to Hooten. And throws the first to retire the side. So the Mets go in or order in the first. And it'll bring up Mike. Well, I'll put Mike Bruhart on the hill. Bruhart. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can see why I forgot him. He was 4 and 11 on the actual season, but only faring 1 and 12. Yes, 1 and 12 on the replay so with a 7 earned run average. So he has. The replay has not been kind to Bruhart. He's pitched 99 innings, allowing 146 innings. I mean, 146 hits. So this, this sounds like uh, Ripley numbers from the Red Sox. Alan Ripley numbers. <laughs> um, 43 walks and only 37 strikeouts and a surrendered four home runs. So the replay is definitely not been kind to Brewhart. We'll see what he can do here against the very tough lineup, the Dodgers. So Davey Lopes will lead it off and play second. Bill Russell, the shortstop, hits second, followed by Reggie Smith, the right fielder, the former Red Sox. Batting cleanup, Steve Garvey, the first baseman, who led the Dodgers in game-winning RBIs in 1978. Batting fifth, Ron Say, the third baseman. Sixth is the left fielder, Dusty Baker. Rick Monday, the veteran. Center fielder will hit seventh. Steve Yeager behind the plate hits eighth, the light hitting catcher, and Burt Hooten on the hill will bat ninth. So the defense for the Mets is going to be Henderson in left, Mazzilli in center, Beauclair in right. Henderson and Beauclair below average range in left and right, Mazzilli above average in center, with Beauclair having an average arm in right, and Mazzilli and Henderson below average arms in left and center. So on the infield, it's going to be Randall, Flynn, Valentine, and Montanez. Randall in at third and Valentin at second with below average range. Flynn average range. And Montanez excellent range at first. And that's making me hungry there. <laughs> anyway, uh, Flynn at short is pretty error prone there. As well as Valentine at second. Randall blow at a little bit below average arrow wise at third and Montanez uh, very good at first. Stearns behind the hit plate. He's got average range with above average arm, slightly above average arm. And Bruhart with a very high error rating on the hill and not very good at holding runners on with a plus four in average range. So Lopes steps into the box. Lopes comes in hitting 276 with. Eight homers and 57 runs batted in. So, Bruhart looks in for the sign from Stearns. Randall and Montanez in on the grass. And it's going to be off the two column, and that is going to be a base hit to left. So, Montanez will hold Lopes on. Lopes is definitely a threat to steal. And we are going to have, let's just make sure I got my... Uh, Everything's set up right here. Yeah, New York managed by the computer, and I will be managing the Dodgers. So I think we're going to have uh, Montana uh, Lopes try to get a lead here and possibly steal a bag, get in a scoring position. So 95% chance, see if he can get the jump here. And he'll steal that one easily as, throw, as Stearns holds on to the ball. Not even a dice roll there. So Lopes with a stolen base. Gets in the scoring position with nobody out. So Russell with a chance to put the Dodgers on top early. 
Russell hitting 308 for the season with 60 runs batted in. Here's the windup in the pitch by Brewhart. And he gets one to hit here, right in the wheelhouse. And that's going to be a base hit to left. And we're going to send him 90% chance. And the throw will be cut off, allowing the run to score. So Russell has himself a RBI single, and the Dodgers are in up early against the Mets. So Reggie Smith up now. Reggie Smith hitting 261 with 20 homers and 65 runs batted in. Brewhart kicks and delivers after getting the sign. And he's going to draw a walk. So Russell moving to scoring position. Runners on first and second now with one down. I mean, with nobody out. One run in already for Steve Garvey. Garvey hitting 324 with 14 homers and 87 runs batted in. And it's going to be off the sixth column. And the dice rolls continue to get unkind to Bruhart as that's going to be a double into the gap. Russell will score. And Smith will be held at third with nobody out. And it's a 2 0 Dodger lead on the RBI double by Steve Garvey. So that'll be up Ron Say. Ron Say hitting 295 with 23 homers matching his total for the season. And 90 runs batted in. As, you, as we pointed out in the last game, um, that is not. He does not have 23 RBIs. That is a um, programming error. Um, I assume it's just on the uh, on the stats. Hopefully, it does. I don't think it'll, it shouldn't affect the card as it is an RBI total. Um, if it was a home run total, I'd be a little concerned. But um, apparently, they just took the home run total and copied it to the RBI total. I believe he did have 84 runs batted on the season. Chance to pick up a couple more RBIs now. With a base hit. So, so Bruhart infield is going to play in early here. Against Say. So Bruhart looks in for the sign from Stearns. Looks at the runners. Kicks and delivers. And it's going to be off the three column. And that's going to be a ground ball to Flynn. Looks Smith back to third and throws to first. To retire Say. So one down now for Dusty Baker. Baker hitting 248 in the season with five homers and 58 runs batted in. It's going to be off the four column. And it's going to be a range check on Flynn. Flynn, average range, gets to it. See if he can make the play. It looks like he will. Infield is also playing in. So Flynn grabs it and throws Smith out at home. As Garvey moves to third. And Baker will reach on the field his choice. So runners at the corners with two down for Rick Monday. Monday hit two is hitting 262 with 14 homers and 45 runs batted in. 19 homers on the actual season. And he gets one in the wheelhouse here. And can't pull the trigger. As the inning comes to an end on the strikeout. So after one full, it's 2-0 in Los Angeles. The Dodgers are 6-4 and four in their last 10 games. So Montanez, Stearns, and Henderson up against Hooten here in the second. With, now with a two-run lead. Montanez hitting 269 with 11 homers, 70 runs batted in. And he gets his pitch to hit here. And that is going to be going, going, and gone. So Montanez gets his 12th homer off of Hooten and halves the lead. Now 2-1. to one. So the Mets come right back and get a run. And we have John Stearns hitting 222 with 11 homers and 50 runs batted in. About 40 point, hitting about 40 points behind his season average. Off the 5 column. And that is going to be hit to say. Scoops it up over to first for out number 1. So that'll bring up the number six hitter, Steve Henderson. Henderson, 277 on the season with seven homers and 44 RBIs. Here's the windup in the pitch off the five column. And that's a ground ball to Lopes. Shove grounder, grabs it, throws the first for out number two. So that'll bring up Bruce Beauclair. Beauclair hitting 252 on the season with a homer and 14 runs batted in. 
and it gets a pitch to hit here and drives this one past Garvey into right so two out single for Beauclair Beauclair will be held on by Garvey brings up the shortstop Doug Flynn Flynn hitting just 210 on the season with 26 runs batted in off the five column and gives this one a ride to left but Baker is there once again waits on it and makes the catch But the Mets get on the board with a solo home run by. Who was that by? <laughs> uh, I believe that was by Dusty Baker. Is that by Dusty Baker? I think it was. I can't remember for some reason. <laughs> I believe it was Dusty Baker. Sorry, Montanez. That's right, Montanez. I don't know why I thought it's by the Mets. That's right. <laughs> not, by, not by the Dodgers. My bad on that one. All right, so let's see if we can get it. I think this is back to where he wanted to be. So, all right, so Bruhart back on the hill after a 23-pitch first inning. Steve Yeager, the number eight hitter, hitting just two four, hitting just two four two oh eight on the season with a homer and twenty seven runs batted in, a little bit above his one ninety three average for the season. So here's the windup in the pitch by Bruhart. Gets one to hit here though, and hits it to short. See if Flynn can come up with it. He'll get to it, but he'll boot it. So, Jaeger will reach on the error by Flynn. So, that'll bring up, that'll bring up Hooten. And we're definitely going to have Hooten bunt one here. Lay one down. Hooten just a 149 hitter with two runs batted in for the season. The actual season. So, Hooten squares around. Randall and Montanez in on the grass. And fielded by Montanez. And they throw for the lead runner, Jaeger. And Jaeger just beats it out as they decide to go to second and come up empty. So that'll put runners on first and second with nobody out. And I'm guessing that Lopes is an excellent bunter. I would think he would be. Yes, I think we're going to have him lay one down here. Although, maybe not. I think we're going to have him hit away. We'll have him hit away. Well, I give up and out. So, Lope steps into the box. He's single to his first at bat. Gets one to hit here. And that is going to be lined out to Flynn. Makes the catch for out number one as the runners reach, get back to the bases quickly. So Bill Russell up now had an RBI single his first time up to put the Dodgers on the board. Grounds this one to Valentine. Up with it oh, second for one. Back to first. Not in time as Russell beats it out. So he'll reach on the field this choice. They get the middle runner. So it'll put runners at the corners with two down for Reggie Smith. He walked his first time up. And that's going to be a fly out to Beauclair. So the Dodgers get the first two runners on, but are unable to score. And after two full, it's 2-1 Los Angeles. So Bruhart steps to the plate. Bruhart hitting just an 075 hitter with 21 strikeouts and 40 at-bats. So he struck out just, a, just over half of his plate appearances. So who looks in for the sign from Yeager is a wind-up in the pitch. And... <laughs> It's going to be on his card. There's not one hit on there, so that will definitely be a strikeout. So top of the order, Randall up now with one down. Randall also struck out his first time up. 
Lines this one to Lopes for out number two. So two up and two down for the Mets. Gonna bring up Bobby Valentine who flew out in his first at bat. It's this one to left. This will be a range check on Baker. Baker average range. Oh, and he's not gonna get to this one. It's gonna go into the corner. And Valentine will have himself a double. So tie running scoring position for Mazzilli. A chance to tie the game here with the base hit. Mazzilli grounded out in his first at bat. And it's a fly ball to right. Smith on the run. Pounds his mitt and makes the catch. So after two and a half it remains two to one Dodgers. Garvey will lead it off. He had an RBI double his first time up. And this one's going to be hit down the corner into the left field corner. And he'll have himself his second double. So lead off double for the for Garvey. Brings up Ron Say who grounded out in his first at bat. And the Dodgers keep getting the good rolls. So that's going to be a double into the gap. Henderson and Mazzilli give chase. And okay, we'll say Mazzilli got to it. And Say will get himself a double. So back-to-back -back doubles. And the Dodgers have a 3-1 to -one lead now. So Baker up now hitting to a field of his choices. First time up. And that's going to be hit to left. Henderson below average range. Gets to it. And bobbles it a little bit but holds on. So Say will have to hold that second. And let's see if he's going to advance here. With nobody out, now we're going to have him hold. So one down now for Rick Monday. Monday sh strikeout victim his first time up. The only strikeout for Pruhart so far. And this will be a range check for Stearns. And he will make the catch of the foul ball. Against the stands for out number two. So it's up to Steve Yeager if he needs to continue. He reached on an error by Flynn his first time up. Pops this one up. Valentine's there. Calls for it. Squeezes it for out number three. The Dodgers add a run. And it's a two-run lead as we head to the fourth. Montanez homered his first time up off Hooten. His 12th home run of the season. Put the Mets on the board. Steps into the box. Chance of a home run here. This is the column he hit it off of. Fly ball to center. Monday has a long run, but hauls it in for out number one. Stearns up now, grounded out in his first at bat. Draws the one out walk. So Stern's not much of a threat to steal, but Garvey will hold him on anyway. Henderson up now. Grounded out in his first at-bat. And this time draws the walk to put runners on first and second. So again, this is not a very good uh, field here for, uh, for Stratomatic to get the batter and the catcher here. As you can see, the batter's... Um, Stats overlapping the catcher. So, Beauclair up now. He singled his first at bat. Tying runs are on base. As Jaeger has a good chat with Hooten, goes back behind the plate. He looks in for the sign, nods his head, kicks and delivers. Looks at the runners. And that is going to be a base hit down the line. Stearns will be held at third with So it's gonna load the bases with one down So that brings up Doug Flynn who flew out in his first at bat Dodges back hoping to turn two here and get out of it Flynn gets one in the wheelhouse though And hits this one sharply to center Stearns will come in Henderson What happened there? 
Uh, Stearns will come in to score. Henderson will score. And Brooklair will take third. So a two-run single by Flynn ties the game at three. So Bruja with a chance to help his own cause here. Struck out in his first at-bat. Hmm. Mets got nothing to lose here. I think they're going to try the squeeze here. Let's try a squeeze. So Bruhart's going to square square around to bunt with with Say and Garvey playing in. Oh, 56% chance. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Why not? Actually, hold on there. <laughs> Actually, I forgot. I am. I should not be be able to do that because I am managing the uh, Dodgers. Uh, what's the chance? A safe chance? We're gonna throw for the runner, and he's gonna be in safe. So let me just check here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So New York is managed by the computer, so apparently, though, I can have him bunt. Well, that worked to the Mets' advantage, so I'm going to I'm gonna keep it there. Hmm, I'm surprised they let me do that. Interesting. Okay. So, all right, so that loads the bases. As Buhart is able to drop one down, Beauclair decides to hold that third. So we have Lenny Randall with the bases loaded and one down. And this one's going to be hit back to Hooten. And he'll throw home to get the lead runner. So two down now. The base is still loaded though for Bobby Valentine who is one for two with a double. So Hooten looking to get out of this with just the two runs coming in. And it looks like he will. It's going to be at the three column. That's a ground ball to the shortstop Russell. Fires to Garvey. And gets him for out number three. But the Mets score two and tie the game at three as we head to the bottom of the fourth. So Hooten will lead it off. Had a successful sacrifice bunt his first time up. Ooh, gets a pitch to hit here. And it hits one to left here. Henderson on the run. And just ba just gets to it. And snow cones it. For out number one. So Hooten gave that one a ride, but just a long out. So it brings up Davey Lopes. Lopes had a single back in the first. One for two on the day. Gets a pitch to it here. And hits a solid single to center. So once again, I think we're going to have Lopes try to get the lead here. Looks like they're a little more aware of him. Still a 60% chance. We're going to try it. And Stearns up and firing. It's high. The catch. The tag. And he's safe with a stolen base. So Lopes with his second steal of the day. That brings up Russell. Russell with a chance to give the have the Dodgers retake the lead. He's already got an RBI today. That's a ground ball to Valentin. Bear hands it over to first in time as Lopes moves to third. So let's check out some scores here. Houston and Chicago are scoreless. Atlanta's on top of Pittsburgh three to one. Cincinnati. All over St. Louis, 8-1. to one. Montreal and San Diego tied at 3. San Francisco ahead of Philadelphia, 2-0. And right here, we're tied at 3. So Lopes at 3rd now with 2 down. Representing the go-ahead run. Reggie Smith up to the plate now. He's 0-1 with a walk. Grounds this one to Randall at 3rd. Grabs it over to 1st. And that'll do it. So we'll head to the 5th. The score tied at three. 
So Mazzilli to lead it off. Mazzilli 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the wind up in the pitch by Hooten. Ground ball to Lopes at second. Fires to first for out number one. So to bring Willie Montanez. Home in his first at bat. Flew out in the fourth. So one for two on the day. And this time draws the walk. So one out walk to Montanez. Brings up John Stearns. Is John Stearns probably not any good at hit and run? We'll see. Actually, I, I should, I'm not managing the Mets though, so we're not going to do it. <laughs> Again, it gives me the opportunity to do it, so I guess I can I could do it. Hmm. Anyway, so Stearns up to the plate now. Stearns gets one to hit here, and that one's hit the Lopes over to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. The Stearns beats the return throw, so he'll reach on the fielder's choice. Now with two down. Henderson's 0-for-1 with a walk today. Pops this one up to Lopes at second. Calls for it and makes the catch. So halfway through, it's Los Angeles Dodgers 3 and the New York Mets 3. We'll clear back out on the hill. We'll clear this probably is arguably his best outing of the season. So to bring up Steve Garvey. Garvey has a pair of doubles on the day with an RBI. Hits this one to third, and they get Garvey for the first time. For out number one. So it'll be a Ron Say. Ron Say had an RBI double back in the third. Lines this one to Randall. Two Hopper. Over to Montanez for out number two. So it'll be up Dusty Baker. Baker 0 for 2 on the day. Gets his first hit, a single to center. So a two-out single for Baker. Montanez will hold him on. And that'll bring up Rick Monday. Monday 0 for 2 on the day. Hits this one sharply to right. McClare is there, glides under it, and makes the catch to end the inning. So the Dodgers go in order in the fifth and remains tied at three as we head to the sixth. So Hooten with 93 pitches through six innings. Let's do five innings, so his pitch count has been pretty high. He's walked three and struck out two. There is action in the Dodger bullpen. I'm not sure exactly who it is, though. So as Hooten did, Hooten did pitch a complete game in the actual game, allowing two runs. And the Dodgers prevailed 3-2 to two in, in the real game. So we'll clear to lead it off for the Mets here in the top of the sixth. He's got a pair of singles on the day. And pops this one out to Garvey. So he's retired for the first time. So we'll clear making the most of his day with a pair of singles so far. So bring up Doug Flynn. He had a two-run single to tie the game back in the fourth. Flew out in the second. And that is going to be a range check on Jaeger. Jaeger, excellent range. Gets to it. Fields the grounder. Fires to Garvey. In time for out number two. Hmm. All right, that'll bring up Bruhart. Bruhart's over. One in the day officially had a sacrifice bunt and field his choice back in the fourth, reaching. And Megan, he's going to be lifted for a pinch hitter. So, Bruhart's day is done. Definitely probably one of his better outings of the season. Although, he'll get a no decision today. So, that'll bring up Ed Cranepool, the veteran, hitting just 167 and 66 at bats with a homer and six runs batted in. So Hooten kicks and delivers. And it's going to be a range check on, say, say average range. Gets to it. Oh, and he's going to boot it. And Cranepool will reach on the error by, say. So each team with an error now. So I bring up the top of the order, Randall. Randall 0 for 3 on the day. 
That's a ground ball to say. This time he handles it cleanly over to Garvey. So the error does not prove costly as we head to the home half of the sixth with the score still tied at three. So that'll bring up, who is this? Marty Cornejo. He pitched in yesterday's game. So far this season, he's got a record of 1-0 and with one save, 8.10 earn run average. 245 ERA in the actual season with a 4-2 and record. 17 innings pitched, 28 hits allowed. 30, 13 walks and 6 strikeouts. So Jaeger up to the plate now. Hmm. I think we're going to pinch hit for Jaeger here. Oops. In a tie game. So who are we going to bring in here? Let's see. So Conejo is a righty. Johnny Oates. Johnny Oates looks like a good candidate. He's very good against right-handed pitching. Hitting 358 for the season in 67 at bats. So I think that's an Okay, so Johnny Oates is going to come in to hit for Jaeger. So Johnny Oates, the future manager of the Orioles, and I believe the Texas Rangers, I want to say, comes to the plate, hitting 358 on the season with four runs batted and 67 at-bats. So Cornejo looks in for the sign from Stearns. Here's the windup in the pitch. Fortunately, does not get one off his card. It's going to be off Cornejo's sixth column, which is not good for the Dodgers. And he'll ground out to Valentin for out number one. Let's see. Did we leave Hooten out there? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. He's got a few little walks on there. I think we're going to leave Hooten in. So it's going to be off the one column, and that will be a strikeout. So two two gone in the Dodger set, uh, sixth inning. Brings up top of the order Lopes. He's got a pair of singles. Two for three on the day. Grounds this one to Randall. And the Dodgers go quietly in the sixth. All right. So we got to make a... So Johnny Oach, I'm pretty sure he's a catcher. I believe. Yeah, we're just going to leave Johnny Oates in at... Backstop, so he'll come in to, for Jaeger. So Johnny Oates' average range with slightly high error rating and a new average arm. So it'll be Valentine, Mazzilli, and Montanez up against Hooten, who in 107 pitches is likely to be his last inning. So Valentine has won for three of the double. Pops this one out to Lopes for out number one. So that brings up Lee Mazzilli. Mazzilli looking for his first hit of the day. Grounds this one to Russell. Scoops it up on one harp. As Garvey scoops it up on one hop. Nice dig by Garvey for out number two. So Montanez up now. He he homered back in the second inning. It's 12th of the season. And this time he'll line a single up the set to middle for a two-out single. So it brings up Stearns. He's over 2 with a walk. And he'll reach on another walk, his second walk of the day. And I think that is going to be it for Hooten as the call to the bullpen. Let's see, what would be the seventh inning here? Oops. So let's see, who do we bring in now? Who do we got? We have Steve Henderson. We have Henderson. So we have a righty, lefty, and a righty. I think we're going to bring in Charlie Huff. So Charlie Huff is going to come in. 
Charlie Huff with a 12-3 and record. And he did pitch in. The reason I'm bringing him, I know he's a starter. Um, but he did pitch uh, in yesterday's game. Not in the replay, but in the actual game. So we're going to bring him in here. I just want to see what his usage is. Probably should have checked that before I brought him in, but yeah, he's a little high in the usage. He's just in for this one inning. So Charlie Huff with a 12 and three record on the season, feeling much better than he did on the actual season. Yeah, he did have eight saves, so he did for, always used in relief. Um, five and five in the actual season with seven saves, 1.54 earner on average in the replay. So he's been excellent in the replay. 88 innings pitched, 56 hits allowed, 40 walks, and 48 strikeouts. And he's only surrendered one home run in the entire season in 88 innings. So Henderson, 0 for 2 with a walk, will come to the plate now with runners on first and second and two down. Huff looking to get out of it and preserve the tie. And gets Henderson to swing. So Charlie Huff comes in and does his job. So here's a trivia question brought to you by Mr. Brody, who is up and about now. Mr. Brody, very excited about his trivia question here. So in 1983, the Orioles won the World Series. Prior to that, when was the last time the Orioles won the series? Oh, boy. Let's see. Was it in the 60s? I want to say. I know they appeared in the 70s. I think they played the Pirates, but they... And I think the Mets, but they lost, I think, both of those series. I'm going to say 1960... Oh boy, I don't even, I don't know my 60s Orioles. 64, we'll just say 1964, probably wrong on that one, but here we go. 1970, they did beat the Reds four games to one, I'd forgotten about that. So 1970 is the answer to that. I know they won in the 60s too, I just can't think of when. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure they did. But anyway, so the Baltimore Orioles, as Miss Mag's, comes by so a nice question by Mr. Brody and Miss Mags on that one so we head to the bottom of the se seventh with Cornejo coming in for his second inning of work still a 3-3 game Russell had an RBI single back in the first inning one for three on the day grounds this one to Valentine he'll get to it and make the play over to Montanez for out number one. So to bring up Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith 0 for 2 with a walk. And he'll take a call third strike. So Montanez, I mean uh, Cornejo, very effective so far today. So Steve Garvey up to the plate now. He's going to be careful with Garvey. He could tie it up with one. I mean, he could break the tie with one swing of the bat. There's the wind up in the pitch. And it'll be a range check on Stearns. It's a pop-up. And he will make the play. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the seventh. So we'll head to the eighth with the score still tied at three. And that will be it for Charlie Huff. Oops. And let's see, who do we bring in now? Let's see, we have a lefty up there. Do we want to bring in a lefty? Rick Roden. I think we're going to bring in Rick Roden. He's overused quite a bit. Gonna watch my usages here. No, I'm not going to bring in Forster. Um... I guess we can bring in this guy. So Lance Rotson is going to come in now. Rotson six and one on the season with two saves. Another excellent, having another excellent season out of the pen. One point three eight earned run average. Again, part of the reason why the Dodgers are at ninety wins on September second. 
his fellow is their bullpen. As we saw, Charlie Huff had an excellent ERA, and, and Terry Forster is, is at, also has one. And as we saw yesterday, and Rotson, another great ERA in 52 innings pitch, just a 1.38 earn run average. So the Dodger bullpen has been a big key to their victory. So they, they've been very good at preserving the lead. So 17 walks, 20 strikeouts in those 52 innings. So Beauclair, two for three on the day. So Rotson looks in for the sign from Oates. Here's the windup in the pitch. Pops this one up to Garvey at first. He makes the catch for out number one. So Houston and Chicago are, are tied at one. Pittsburgh edging Atlanta now 5-4. to four. Cincinnati is destroying St. Louis 11-2 to two now. Montreal and San Diego still tied at three. San Francisco has increased the lead of Philadelphia now three to nothing. As Vita Blue is ahead for San Francisco. And it's 3-3 three, three in the top of the eighth. So one down now for Doug Flynn. Flynn had a two-run single back in the fourth, one for three. Grounds this one to Garvey at first. Should have no problem with this one. Excellent range. Gets to it. And makes the play. For out number two. So I imagine they're gonna they're gonna pinch hit for, for Cornejo here. And they do. See who they bring in now. And they're gonna bring in Tom Grieve, who did actually have a pinch hit appearance in the game. The actual game, he was 0 for 1 on that pinch hit appearance. Let's see what he didn't do here. So hitting one eight, just 181 in the replay with two homers and nine runs batted in. And he will strike out swinging. So Rodson pitches a 1, 2, 3, eighth, and we head to the home half of the eighth with a score tied at 3. And it looks like the Mets have made a pitching change here, of course. It's going to be... Kevin Koble comes in. Koble just one in six on the season with a 4.05 earner on average. 73 innings pitched, 70 hits allowed, 30 walks and 35 strikeouts, and has surrendered nine home, uh, seven home runs. So Say steps in. Say one for three with a RBI double back in the third, and he'll pop this one up to Flynn at short. Routine pop-up, and he makes the catch for our number one. So Dusty Baker up now. Baker singled in his last at-bat, one for three on the day. And that's going to be a range check on Randall. As Mr. Brody is... Oh, you okay, Mr. Brody? I think Mr. Brody ate a mint with a wrapper on it earlier, so that's probably what he's <laughs> not choking. Well, some semi choking. He's okay though. Are you okay there, Mr. Brody? All right. So that is going to be a range check, which Randall gets to it. Makes a play over to Montanez for out number two. No, actually, it's going it's to get through. Looked like the range check it was successful, but it gets through. So go ahead, run on base now. Hmm, do we do some hit and run? Let's see Monday's hit and run ability here. D. Hmm. Do we lift Baker for a pinch runner? Let's check and see who we have on the bench here. I think North's got some speed. He's, he's good defensively. Probably better defensively than Baker is. Yeah, we're going to bring in Bill North to pinch run. For. Where is he? For, for uh, Baker. So Bill North comes in. He'll come in and he'll play left when he comes in. I believe he'll play left. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, he'll pull. Oh, actually, I think we're going to move Monday over to left and put North and center. As Monday is got better range in left. So I'll probably do that. 
All right, so back to the action here. One down and North at first. North is a threat to steal. Let's see, Coble and Stearns, negative one. We'll see if we can get the jump here. So 70% chance. Do we risk it? I think we do with the bottom of the order coming up and Monday up at the plate. So we're going to try to steal here, see if he gets the jump. And oh no, and he gets picked off as he gets too far off the bag. Ugh. So a blunder by North there. Coming on to the pinch run. Apparently he wasn't all stretched out as it looked a little slow getting back there. So Monday up now, now with two outs. And that is going to be a fly ball to Beauclair. He'll get to it. And make the catch to end the inning. So North gets picked off. And Monday flies out to end the inning. So we'll head to the ninth with the score still tied at three. All right, so let's do our changes here. So we're going to move Monday to left. I think. Let's check out... Uh, Let's check north. Yeah, north is just as good at center. So we're going to have north at in center. That's better. That's our best defense there. All right, so there we go. Yeah, better defense now. Monday, much better range than Baker. So all right, so Razhan in for the ninth here. Razan with excellent range, but a pretty high error rating. Very good at holding runners on, though. Just 12 pitches in the eighth there. So he'll come up for the ninth. So top of the order, Randall to lead it off. Randall 0 for 4 in the day. Grounds this one to say at third. And he'll fire over Garvey for out number one. So Bobby Valentine, he's 1 for 4 with a double. Grounds this one also to... Say guarding the line over to Garvey for out number two. So to be at Mazzilli with two outs and the base is empty. Mazzilli hitless on the day. And it's going to be a range check on Lopes. Lopes with excellent range. He'll get to it. And make the play over to Garvey. And it's a 1 2 3 ninth for the Mets. So the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the ninth with a chance to win it here. Looks like Cole Willis. Going to come back out here to start the ninth. And, ooh, Johnny Oates horrible against <laughs> lefties there. So I think we're going to pinch hit for him. Just making sure we have another, another catcher we can bring in. Is Joe Ferguson a catcher? Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah, Joe, we have Joe Ferguson. Yeah, he play, played in yesterday's game. And Grody, too. I think Jerry Grody's a better defensive catcher. Yeah, a little bit better. All right, so we'll bring in... Is Grody any good against the lefties? Uh, it's 271. He's not bad. Do we have anybody with speed here? Vic DeVillo? Not so great against the lefties. He is a 312 hitter, but... Most of that's against righties. Let's see. Actually, Manny Moda, good against lefties. Yes. So we're going to bring in Manny Moda, the veteran, to come in. So Manny Moda will come in to pinch hit for Oates. Let's see if they stick with Coble. And they do. Looks like it. Well, looks like they probably will. So Manny Moda hitting 294 in 17 at bats with two runs batted in. Hit 303 on the actual season in 33 at bats. So Moda looks in for the sign. I mean, Coble looks in for the sign from Stern. Here's the wind up in the pitch. And Moda's going to get one to hit here. And that's going to be a single up the middle. So Moda comes off the bench and gets himself a single. Moda, not very good speed. So we will. That's about it. That's like Bob Bailey's speed there. So we are going to lift him. So Moda does his job, gets on base. Is that Lee Lacey? Let's see. So Lacey a 14, not bad. Davila, I don't think he has speed. No, 13. 
Jerry Grody, no. I know. Martinez. Martinez. Good speed. He's the best so far. Byron White. And I know Ferguson isn't going to have good speed. So we're going to bring in Martinez to pinch run for Moda. So Ted Martinez comes in. The pinch run. Almost double the speed of, well, rating wise, than Moda. Let's see. And Rotson, is Rotson any good at bunting? Let's see what he is. If he's an A bunter, I might leave him. And now he's a C bunter, so he will be lifted. So we're going to bring in somebody to see if they can get Martinez over here. Lacey, not a good bunter either. Davilo, he might be a good bunter. No, nope, not good. Is Jerry Grody any good? He's a B bunter. Oh, White's a C bunter. How about Ferguson? Ferguson's a C bunter. So our best is Jerry Grody. He could come in and catch afterwards. So I think we're going to bring in Jerry Grody. We're going to bring him in anyway, so... We can do a double switch here. So Jerry Grody will come in to try to lay one down here. Jerry Grody, 246, hitter with six runs about in. He had to get held an 81% chance here, so he is going to try to lay one down and get Martinez in the scoring position. 81%. So, all right, so Coble looks in for the sign from Stearns. Randall and Martinez in on the grass. Lays one down. And throws the ball away. So a two-base error by Stearns. And Martinez will go to third. Grody to second. Wow. <laughs> so that proves costly. As now we have the winning run. At, as they're going to bring the infield and outfield in for Lopes. I am going to... Even though his run doesn't mean anything... I'm going to get rid of him anyway, just in case. In case. Yeah, we don't want. Something weird might happen. Who knows? But we don't want to have Grody. Actually, we'll leave him in for now. If uh, if he gets the one out, we might take him out. We'll see. Uh, all right, there is no force play at third. So, all right. So, I think we're good here. So, Davey Lopes up now. Davey Lopes had the game-winning RBI, the only run of the game in yesterday's game. Let's see if he can... Have the game-winning RBI today. He's two for four on the day. So Kobo looks in for the sign from Stearns. Here's the wind-up in the pitch. It's going to be up to six column. And it's going to be a base hit to left. And that will drive home the winning run. And Davey Lopes gets the game-winning RBI in the bottom of the ninth. Much to the delight of the Dodger fans. So the Dodgers are able to hold on and come back and win it in the bottom of the ninth. So a walk-off win for the Dodger Blue. So let's go through the stats now. Bert Hooten pitches six and two-thirds innings, allowing six hits, three runs, all of them earned. Four walks, two strikeouts. Charlie Huff pitched a third of an inning, striking out the only batter he faced on three pitches. And Rotson gets the win, pitching two scoreless innings and striking out a batter. So he goes to 7-1 and one and continues his as the Dodger pen looks excellent again today. Bruhart for the Mets pitches 5 innings, allowing 7 hits, 3 runs, all of them earned. Probably his one of his better outings of the year. One walk and one strikeout. Cornejo pitched well, pitches 2 scoreless innings, striking out 2. And Coble takes the loss, now 1-7 and seven on the season. Pitches an inning, plus allowing three hits, one run, which was proved to be unearned. So the error by Stearns, very costly, leading to the winning run coming in. Well, eventually led to the winning run. Um, definitely helped out a lot, getting the runner over to third with nobody out. 
Let's see here. So the Dodgers, let's go through the lineup now. Davey Lopes with the game winning RBI, three for five on the day. With an RBI and a run scored. Bill Russell, one for four with an RBI and a run scored. Reggie Smith was hitless on the day, 0 for three. Steve Garvey, a couple of hits, two for four with a run scored to RBI. Ron Say, one for four with an RBI. Dusty Baker, two for four. Bill North was uh, came in as a pinch runner and moved over to center, came in as the play center. Rick Monday, 0 for four. Steve Yeager, 0 for two on the day. Johnny Oates as a pinch hitter, 0 for 1. He came in the catch for an inning. And uh, inning or two, I think. Manny Moda had a pinch hit single, 1 for 1, which led to the sacrifice, which a lot that he was pinch run for by Martinez. And the peanuts seem to be flowing here at Dodger Stadium even after the game's over. So Martinez ends up scoring the winning run, coming on as a pinch runner. Burt Hooten, 0 for 2. Charlie Huff did, uh, Rotson did not get at bats. And Jerry Grody um, came in as a pinch hitter and l tried to lay down the bunt, in, which was thrown away by Stearns. So he will not be credited with an at bat, even though um, it was an error. He was giving himself up anyway. So that is it. It's the Dodgers win game number 91 now. So we're two for two in the month of September. Uh, we have another game left today, which we'll check out in a second here. So let's end the game. Check out our standings now. So with the win now, the Dodgers improved to 91 and 44 for a 674 earn average. Houston. Oh, Houston has. Oh, no, they were in second place anyway. So Houston is now Well, they lost, so now they they're fifteen and a half games behind. So the Dodger magic number is now just thirteen. Philadelphia has a magic number is, is almost double that with twenty five. As Philadelphia ended up losing today and the Pirates won. So the Pirates now Five and a half games behind the Phillies. Chicago pulls winning today. Seven and a half games out. Uh, Montreal, who lost, uh, is still eight games out. So it's pretty much a, well, could be a four-team race in the AL. I mean, in the NL East. Although they do have a five and a half game lead, but anything could happen there. Dodgers pretty comfortable lead in the West. So now 91 and 44 with 27 games remaining. So if they go 25 and 2, they can tie the Cubs record for the season. I mean, for the uh, best record in the National League. Most likely they will not going to do that. Um, but they do have a slight chance at the Pittsburgh Pirates record of 110 wins for second all time. So if they go 19 and 8, that's definitely a possibility. They can tie it or 20 and 7, which is about what they've been doing close to. As you can see, um, they've had months where they were 20 and 8 and 20 and 9. So that is definitely doable um, to break the Pittsburgh Pirates record. And again, like we said before in the last game, if they are able to get um, 111 wins and beat the Pirates, and they go on to win the World Series, they will be the um, team in the National League um, with the most wins to win a World Series. The 2000, I mean, the 1906 Cubs won 116 games, but they did not win the World Series that year. So, all right, so we'll be back with Game 2. Let's check and see our lineup here. All right, I mean, our pitching matchup. So it looks like it's going to be Nino Espinosa on the hill against Bob Welch. Bob Welch just, well, not recently passed away. He passed away at, at age of 57 from a heart attack uh, just four years ago. I was just look, reading that article. Um, and Nino Espinosa, I know he died fairly early too, so uh, young. So this will be a good 
replay here of this game between Nino Espinosa. He was one of my just had a he had a really cool name. I thought <laughs> I just liked him because um, he had a cool name from the Mets. No other reason really. The hapless Mets of 1978. So we'll be back with another game there in game two of the doubleheader. So join us in that where the Dodgers will continue their perfect September 2-0 so far. Good start. And we'll see what's happening. Hey, Miss Mags. Miss Mags is in the house here saying hi to all our fans. Looks like she's going to know. She's not going to. She's coming back here to say hi to me. Oh, she's got something to say here. So maybe we'll continue that conversation in the next game. We'll see. And she's back on the chair now. So take care. God bless. And we'll see you in game two of the doubleheader from September 2nd. Bye-bye now.